The Lazy Peon. World of Warcraft. It's been the most popular MMORPG over the past 10 years, and if you're a gamer, odds are you've considered giving it a try at some point. In this video, we're going to look at 10 reasons why you should play World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor, or at least give it a try. This video is primarily aimed at people who haven't played WoW before, or players who have previously played but quit a long time ago. Number 1. A Whole New World World of Warcraft doesn't fail in giving you the massive world that you'd expect to find in an MMORPG. The game's been worked on and developed for over 10 years and over that time, Blizzard have created a huge expanse of land for you to explore. I've played the game for over 6 years and I still haven't fully explored every zone in the game. It's huge, and as you progress through the game and its various expansions, you'll notice the artwork and graphics for the later zones improving over the previous ones, until you get up to the level 90 to 100 zones released with the most recent expansion, Warlords of Draenor. The zones in Draenor are a huge step above anything Blizzard have made in the previous expansions. The lighting, new models and soundtracks to these zones work together in harmony to create an immersive levelling experience in which I've never felt before playing this game. During the launch I remember getting distracted by the scenery in the zones, so I kept taking a bunch of screenshots before carrying on with my quests. One thing that really makes these new zones stand out is how diverse they are with their themes and art styles. In the previous expansion, Mists of Pandaria, the artwork and theme for the zones were really similar, which resulted in visual burnout for myself and many other players. I love how different each zone is in Draenor. You'll find snow, harsh canyons, towering spires, moonlit fields, deadly forests, and pretty much anything else you can think of. This helps break up the levelling experience and when progressing to a new zone, you'll think to yourself, awesome, a totally different zone to explore. This keeps the levelling experience new and exciting, at least for the first few times anyway. On a final note, in Warlords of Draenor, Blizzard have updated most of the character models with the remaining ones coming out in patches over the course of the expansion. These models look great and give your hero much more personality in their emotions and animations. So if you've never played World of Warcraft before and you're the type of gamer that likes exploration and playing in a huge world, this is the game for you. Number 2. End Game Content in World of Warcraft, reaching max level is only just the beginning. Some would argue it's when the game really starts. You see, the main reason people play this game is for the end game content. This is content that Blizzard designed specifically for max level players, and this typically comes in the form of raids, battlegrounds, arenas, and various solo content such as max level quest lines. One thing endgame content generally rewards players with is more powerful max level gear, and the more gear you get, the more options you have in terms of what groups you can join and what content you're capable of doing. For example, once you hit max level, you'll run normal mode dungeons until you've got enough gear to enter heroic dungeons. Once you've got enough gear from heroic dungeons, you'll progress into either LFR difficulty raids, which are essentially just a way for players to see the content but not really experience it with any difficulty, or you'll progress straight into normal mode raiding, which has much more personal responsibility, challenge and is more rewarding with loot and fun. From there, players have the choice to progress even further into heroic mode raiding and mythic raiding, which requires knowledge and research of the fights, and also requires players to know how to play their class to its optimal performance. Once on the heroic and mythic scene, you'll need to find a guild to help you progress. This usually involves you shopping around for a guild that suits your schedule, and you completing a trial to prove you're good enough to fill their roster. At the top level of raiding, guilds compete for ranks to see how they stack up against other guilds in the world. The main prize at this level is to get a world first or a server first boss kill, which means you're the first guild in the world or on your server to kill a certain boss. This rewards players with great personal satisfaction. If PvE content isn't for you, then there's a separate progression path for players who want to do PvP content. Once you hit max level, you'll farm random battlegrounds until you've got yourself a full set of honor gear. Then you'll start looking for players of a similar skill level as you to enter the arena with. Arena is a small competitive PvP area designed for 2v2, 3v3 and 5v5 combat, and winning arena games will give you conquest points and a personal PvP rating. Conquest points are used for buying the most powerful PvP gear in the game, and players serious about pushing to a high PvP rating will need to get as much of this gear as possible throughout the PvP season. 
As you push to a high PvP rate, you'll need to have mastered your class and know how to communicate effectively with your arena team. At high levels, players generally use voice chat software such as TeamSpeak, Ventrilo or Skype to do this. Once you've battled your way to the top of the arena ranks, you'll be rewarded with tiles relative to your achievement, the highest being the Gladiator tile for being in the top 0.5% of arena teams in that season. The best of the best can try and achieve a rank 1, which is to be the highest rated player of a certain spec at any point in that season. Alternatively, if Arena isn't for you, Rated Battlegrounds offer a more team-based progression path and work on a similar rating system. Or if you're not wanting to become a seriously hardcore PvP player and just want to do it for a bit of fun, you can always keep doing the random Battlegrounds, non-rated Arena skirmishes and try the new PvP island Ashran that was released with Warlords of Draenor. Overall, World of Warcraft has a hell of a lot of content for you to sink your teeth into, especially as a new player, and every 4-6 to six months, Blizzard usually release a new patch including a new raid tier, more max level content and the start of a new PvP season. There's always stuff to do in this game. Except for that time during Dragon Soul and the Siege of Orgrimmar, where they really screwed things up. But we try to forget about that. Number 3. Accessibility I've had a lot of people comment on my previous videos saying they'd like to give WoW a try, but they feel like the game's been going on too long and they'd feel like they've missed too much to catch up. The truth is, WoW has never been more accessible for new players. You can buy the battle chest for five to ten pounds in which you'll receive a free month of subscription, and you can then buy the most recent expansion, Warlords of Draenor, for thirty-five pounds, and you'll receive a free level ninety boost for a character of your choice, meaning you can jump right into the new expansion for forty to forty-five pounds, which is the price of most new triple A games on consoles. Once you've leveled to 100, you'll easily be able to go back and solo old raids and dungeons if you feel like you've missed out on them. You'll also find it easier than ever to play at a level that suits you. For example, if you work a lot and are restricted in your gaming time, the Dungeon Finder will help you find raids in a queue based system that requires little to no effort or commitment. However, if you then decide you want to progress further into harder content, the pre-made group finder will help you find a group specifically for the content you're looking for and allow you to sign up as long as you meet the minimum requirements. If you then wanted to join a guild, raiding has never been more accessible as raid sizes on normal and heroic mode are flexible from 10 to 30 people, meaning the mobs and bosses scale depending on the amount of people in the raid, so no one has to get left out. Also, if you're worried about being undergeared and left behind whilst the minimum gear requirements get increasingly higher, then don't, because every time there's a new patch, there's a new catch-up system that's introduced to help you get to the point where you can move into the next difficulty of progression. Another new feature Blizzard have said they're adding to the game is the ability to pay for your subscription with in-game gold, which is awesome, because not only will it save people a bunch of money per year, you'll also be able to buy your friend's subscription just by giving them gold, which in a sense lessens the barrier to entry for the game. Number 4, the questing experience. In Warlords of Draenor, the questing experience from 90 to 100 is simply put, the best it has ever been in comparison to any of the previous expansions. Right off the bat, you're faced with an obvious and imminent threat from the Iron Horde, and are quickly sent to the Dark Portal to stop them pouring into Azeroth. Once through the portal, you find yourself stranded in this strange new land, where you fight alongside major lore characters to establish a foothold from which you can fight the Iron Horde. Throughout the questing experience, you'll see many in-game cinematics that are used really effectively to deliver the main storyline, and for me, these cinematics were both awesome and totally unexpected. For the first time in a WoW expansion, I feel like I've had a clear goal on what I'm trying to achieve whilst levelling up, and feeling like I was part of the story only made me want to carry it on and see it through to the end. In terms of gameplay, the questing experience has much more diversity and optional content this time round, in the form of random treasures, rare mobs and bonus objectives. This was something I really enjoyed because it gives you the choice of questing or treasure hunting, and more choices for the player is always a good thing. Another thing that impressed me during the questing was how much Blizzard have improved at storytelling. An example of this was during the Draenor starting area, you meet a female Draenei called Yrel, and throughout the questing experience you see her evolve from an average Draenei to a real badass after witnessing her sister's death. On a final note, all the main quests in Draenor are fully voice acted to a high standard, so even if you're not the kind of player to read through the quest text, you'll still subconsciously know what's going on with the story. Number 5. Lore 
Warcraft as a franchise has been around for over 20 years, with the first game being released in 1994. Since then, the story of Warcraft has been developed over various games and novels based on the games. If you're someone that loves immersing yourself into lore and fantasy stories, World of Warcraft has the most backstory and lore of any game I know of, and it's constantly being developed as the game progresses from expansion to expansion. Good lore and backstory is really important for MMORPGs, as it creates a foundation to build your future story upon. World of Warcraft is based on already established archetypes such as orcs, trolls, goblins and elves that have been around in stories long predating Warcraft, so many people already feel familiar with the game's races when logging in, and can relate to them easier in comparison to an MMO that makes its lore up from non-pre-existing archetypes. World of Warcraft gives players the option to play each faction, but instead of branding the Horde as the bad guys and the Alliance as the good guys, it instead allows the player to experience the game from both sides of the story, where they'll most likely come to the conclusion that neither is bad or good, they're just two factions with different morals and intentions. In the most recent expansion, Warlords of Draenor were sent back to an alternate timeline of Draenor to stop the Iron Horde from destroying our current timeline of Azeroth. The Iron Horde was brought together by Garrosh Hellscream, who he defeated in the final patch of Mists of Pandaria, but he was spared his life so he could stand trial for his crimes. Garrosh then escaped from his prison and, with the help of the bronze dragon Kyra's Dormu, went to an alternate timeline of Draenor to bring together the Iron Horde. Overall, World of Warcraft is a game with an ever-evolving story and a huge amount of lore for even the most dedicated of lore buffs to sink their teeth into. Number 6. Multiplayer World of Warcraft is an MMORPG, the first part of which means massively multiplayer, and this is obviously an important aspect of the game. In previous expansions, however, the game to me felt as though it was losing the MMO part of it, with flying being allowed in every zone, meaning you hardly ever saw other players out in the world. In Warlords of Draenor though, Blizzard have been working hard to put the MM back in the ORPG of World of Warcraft, and they've done this by not allowing flying in the new continent of Draenor. This makes the questing experience much more enjoyable as you can team up with other players in your area to do bonus objectives and some quests. Another thing Blizzard have done is completely remove all challenge from LFR raiding to try and push players to normal mode raiding. LFR since its release in Cataclysm has been a toxic environment for anyone who entered it. The main problem being that despite it already being easy, groups still had low success rates which created the illusion it was real raiding. Now with the content being trivialised, the illusion has gone and LFR has become what it always should have been, a tourist mode to see the content. The result of this is more players wanting to participate in higher levels of raiding, thus increasing the recruitment pool for guilds, making for more raiders and a more sociable experience. Additionally, Blizzard have introduced the new Group Finder, which allows players to create their own groups for specific content. Other players can then sign up and receive an invite if they meet the requirements. This creates more opportunities for players not in raiding guilds to see the content through the Group Finder and potentially be recruited by a guild whilst doing so. Throughout the years on World of Warcraft, I've met some truly hilarious people. I've even heard of marriages and real life friendships happening between people that have met in game. To really get the most out of the multiplayer aspect of WoW, it's best to join a guild and sign up for as many events as you can, because the main thing that makes this game fun is the people you're playing it with. Number 7. Role Playing World of Warcraft is a role playing game and everyone that plays it role plays to a certain extent, even if they're not quite aware of it. From the moment you select your faction, race and class, you've decided what role you're going to play for that character. There are however servers for players that are passionate about active role playing, in which you create your own backstory and make up your own adventures with other players that have a similar interest. World of Warcraft is a great game for people that like to roleplay, as it provides a world in which they can build their own story upon, and use pre-existing lore to determine the personality traits of their roleplaying character. For example, in Warcraft lore, goblins are heavily motivated by gold and personal gain. A player that wants to roleplay as a goblin can then take this into consideration when roleplaying as that race to impact their decisions when adventuring with other roleplayers. For me and many other WoW players, the roleplaying aspect of the game only goes as far as us feeling like a powerful champion of our respective faction, as we battle our way through endgame content. 
The main reason I like the role playing trait of WoW is that it feels like an escape from the real world. In WoW, I'm a powerful druid that can shapeshift into many different forms, but in real life, I'm just a regular guy that likes computer games. Due to this subconscious feeling, I've found that whenever I've been going through a stressful time in my life, playing WoW has always helped as it takes your mind off things due to the immersive nature of the game. Number 8. Garrisons. In the latest expansion Warlords of Draenor, players have access to a new feature called Garrisons, which is essentially WoW's version of player housing on steroids. As a commander of the Alliance or Horde, you are in charge of your garrison, and you build it up over the course of the levelling experience using various resources and blueprints you find along the way. Not only do you get to see your garrison evolve from a simple collection of wooden buildings to a giant fortress, but you also get to recruit followers and level them up by sending them on missions from which you'll receive rewards. The more you upgrade your followers, the better the missions and rewards are that you'll receive. This for me has been one of the most addicting and enjoyable features of the expansion from a solo gameplay point of view, as it gives you an alternative way to get gear away from raiding and PvP. The garrison also offers players a passive means of making gold and having access to other professions via the mine, herb garden and profession buildings, which is really nice. Number 9. UI Improvements Over the years, the default user interface has gone through many changes to make it more user friendly and easy to use. In Warlords of Draenor, the user interface is better than ever, with Blizzard updating the map, adding a bag sort functionality, a pet and mount tab, a toy box tab, improved quest tracker, highlighted mobs, better dungeon journal and a pre-made group finder. All these improvements are really helpful and a nice addition to the game. One thing that's great about World of Warcraft though is the abundance of user created add-ons that can totally change the appearance of the default UI if you don't like it. I've personally gone with an interface add-on called Elv UI, which I'd highly recommend. As a new player starting WoW, the default user interface is really simple and easy to get the hang of in comparison to other similar MMOs, and with the vast selection of add-ons available for the game, you can make things even easier for yourself. Number 10. WoW isn't dead. Regardless of the game being over 10 years old, World of Warcraft has shown no signs of losing its dominance over the MMORPG genre, with subscriptions soaring to 10 million for the launch of Warlords of Draenor. Despite many players over the years preaching that WoW is dead as the reason they quit, the game is actually far from it, and I've had many people ask me if it's worth them playing WoW, as they've heard that subscription numbers are dwindling. For anyone unsure on whether or not they should play WoW for this reason, then don't be. The game has a really loyal player base and far more subscribers than any other game in the genre. You'd be better off playing WoW than jumping on the WoW Killer bandwagon which is typically an MMO with unrealistically high expectations that quickly goes free to play and riddled with microtransactions once it fails to retain its player base. I'm not saying WoW is the only MMORPG worth playing, I'm just saying it's probably the best one to invest a lot of time into due to how well it stood the test of time so far. So, to wrap this video up, World of Warcraft isn't dead. Warlords of Draenor is shaping up to be the best expansion yet. The game has a huge world, massive player base, great questing experience, tons of lore, excellent endgame content and is becoming more accessible than ever before. If you've never played WoW and are thinking about giving it a try then I'd strongly recommend you do so because this game has something for everyone. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did please comment, like and subscribe to my channel for more variety World of Warcraft content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.